ready? Okay, we'd like to welcome you to the regular call meeting of the Breckenridge County Board of Education. Uh, we'll go ahead and call us to order and recognize guests. We have several in attendance here today. Roll call, all the board members are here. Item C is agenda revisions or additions. There uh, Okay. Item two <coughs> is routine consent actions. Approve the minutes of the regular meeting April 14th, 2021 and the special meeting, special call meeting of April the 29th of 21. Uh, approve the treasurer's orders, approve the payment of bills, approve the performance bonds in the amount required by the KRS, approve the fundraiser request for the 21-22 school year, and approve the 21-22 school budgets as required by K KR. Okay. Vanessa makes a motion. Okay. Rick seconds. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Move on to item three, which is the student presentation recognitions. All right, we have several uh, things to celebrate and recognize tonight. I'd like to congratulate BCHS student Rhea Patel for being selected as a Gates Scholarship recipient. This is a highly selective scholarship that will fund Rhea's full cost of attendance for a bachelor's degree. Congratulations to BCHS student Ava St. Clair for being accepted into the Kentucky Governor's School for the Arts. Congratulations are also in order for BCHS student Caden Lucas for being accepted into the Kentucky Governor's School for Entrepreneurs. And congratulations to the following BCHS students for being selected to participate in the Kentucky Governor's Scholars Program. Ian Brockman, Reese DeHaven, Delana Dow, Avery Powers, Ava St. Clair, Elena Tall, and Christian Wheatley. Congratulations to the ATS Bearcat uh, basketball team for finishing their season as county tournament runner-ups. I'd also like to congratulate the Lady Bearcats for winning the county tournament for the second season in a row. Congratulations to the Ben Johnson Wildcat basketball team for winning the county tournament championship. Congratulations to Breckridge County FFA Conduct of Meetings team, which is Parley, if, uh, and they won the Lincoln Trail Regional Contest recently. And congratulations to Mr. Ricky Dudgeon for being named the next principal of Ben Johnson Elementary School. Mr. Dudgeon has served as the band director of Ben Johnson, or I'm sorry, at BCHS and taught at BCMS for the last 11 years. He'll begin his duties on July 1st. And that concludes recognitions. All right, we'll move on to item four, discussion and action items. Under A, instruction and curriculum, the Head Start Report. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Well, we, we made it to May. Yeah. We're excited about that. Um, in April, we assess our students one final time and uh, progress reported to all parents before school is out this month. Uh, teachers are per preparing uh, award ceremonies and graduation pictures, which is also very important for our kiddos. That will be coming up soon. And uh, we received word that we are receiving more COVID relief funds from Head Start, so we look forward to getting those funds soon to help us with our operating costs. Thank you. We'll move on to item two, which is approved the site date site based decision making council's final allocations to school councils. Thank you, Jamie. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll just be quick. Um, you have this in your packets, and uh, there haven't been any changes since our um, first March 1st uh, that we sent to you all. Uh, so we ended this with final allocations showing 422 um, district employees for the next school year. Oops. All right. We'll move on to item three. Oh, we need approval. Somebody needs to make a motion. Joy makes the motion. <laughs> Vanessa seconds. Any other discussion there? All those in favor? We'll approve that one. Uh, here reports from Irvington and Custer. Right. Looks like we have Miss Renee Wright, and Principal of Custer Elementary I'll School. I'll just try to jump up here and take this. All right. <laughs> Brandon's a little scared of me, so he doesn't fight me. <laughs> <laughs> We're both nervous using the clicker. I'm telling on you. We've never used this before, so. Are you going to click for me now? Nope. I have to keep it on the screen, though, for it to work. Okay. Thanks for giving me your time tonight. We're excited. Of course, it's been a not so normal year, and that's been okay because. We've learned one thing this year, um, kids are way more resilient than we are and adapt to change much more easily. We have also learned that, uh, and we've always known this, but relationships are huge. Communication has been vital this year. If anything, COVID has brought us stronger communication and closer relationships with our community and families. Some of our accomplishments, we did not have enough students to have a quick recall team or a um, FPS team. We had four kiddos that competed at district in written assessment and all four kiddos placed at district in written assessment, which gave us enough points in turn to place third at district governor's <laughs> So we were stoked about that. 
Um, and then they went on to regionals, and we did have one student place in multiple events at regional. Our girls basketball team placed third in the tournament. Um, I can tell you that when we first delayed the tournament, I thought it will never happen, or at least our season, I thought it would never happen. And then when it came time for this to happen, I was a little skeptical, um, just because of the time of the year and everything going on. But thanks to Dr. B and Mr. Hayes and Ms. Martin and our great teamwork that we have in this elementary crew, um, we pulled it off. And the middle school was very gracious and let us have all, the, all of our games there and the tournament there. And that was nice because we had the capacity for parents and families to come in. Um, the next thing I'd like to talk about is that we have really grabbed on to social emotional learning and mindfulness at Custer. We started this three years ago when I became principal. My counselor is a wonderful, wonderful resource. She is behind this 100% and drives this at our building. Um, every classroom at Custer has morning meetings and the kids love it. It's a great time for them to do their check-ins. They know their zones of regulation. You can hear conversations. I'm green today. Well, I'm a little blue. And you know exactly where your kids are as they're coming in. Um, one thing we've also been mindful to do this year to address this is strategically place staff members in the building in the mornings so that every child that enters our building is greeted by name. So that has been something else we've really been intentional with doing. We still have our calming corners. That's had to look a little different this year because of COVID. Um, but we're still using those and our kiddos know what that means and, and why we're doing it and how to use it. Um, again, in our guidance classes, we have that focus. Um, as she goes, she does careers, but she also always starts with a mindfulness activity. As a matter of fact, we're using mindfulness right now in our morning announcements. The Mind Yeti, I don't know if you're familiar with Mind Yeti, check it out. Um, it, it will kind of get you going for the day. And then our FRC has jumped on with that as well, Katie Miller. She has started sharing mindfulness resources with our families and our students and sending things home for summer for that. So we're, we're thankful that everybody there has bought in. Um, our kids and families know what it is. Positive office referral program, we're still doing that this year. We're also doing shout outs in the afternoon on announcements. Kiddos who have mastered certain things, kiddos who've had great behavior, um, respect for other staff members. We also shout out to staff members making sure that they know they're appreciated as well. We were excited to be able to host the GT Visual Arts Day for the entire district. You can see some of the pictures there of the products. Um, it was a great day. The group in the middle is our elementary GT group for visual arts. They came to Custer and spent the entire day doing nothing but working on visual arts with Ms. Allison Hall, the GT teacher, and our art teacher, Ms. Laura Priest, who does a phenomenal job with our art program at Custer. We also did a STEAM book character challenge this year, which was a family project. Um, our FRC again kind of speared that. And then we, she also created a family scavenger hunt over one of our breaks. And it was all over, well, different parts of the county, um, but they could use the QR codes and things like that. So we had several families at Custer participate. You saw this last year, but this is very important to us. Our Be Blue initiative is still strong at Custer. Um, we still remind our kids every day to be respectful, responsible, safe, and kind. Those are the pillars that we live on um, in Custer. We also incorporate the Brick Strong theme, and we make sure that our, they see that when they come in every day. They're seeing that Brick Strong and what it means to be Brick Strong. They're also seeing the, the keywords for being Brick Strong and being blue over their classrooms as they go in and out every single day. The video in the middle, which you saw and heard last year, I kept this because I love it. We didn't get to do assemblies this year, but we still do our morning announcements together. We still have some classes who sing our Custer song from time to time. Um, a teacher, a couple of teachers wrote this song, I think a few years ago, before I got back. So it's pretty important to our building. Um, some other accomplishments I just found out today. We had two kiddos who placed very highly in the KET Young Writers competition. Um, there were 590 submissions across the state. We had a fourth grader who placed third oh, with her story. She was able to read and record her story for KET and it will be on KET's site. We also had a um, first place finalist, not a first place finalist, so she was fourth place, but she was the first finalist 
in our first grade division. Um, so <coughs> we're super excited and we're going to be pushing that out to you so you can share it on right. the district site and in the paper. All right, these are just some things that we've done this year. Um, it's, <laughs> it's been an adventure, to say the least. You'll see some things from our GT day. Um, you'll see some of our kiddos doing sight words and shaving cream. You'll see some of the STEAM projects there with the pigeon. We tried to have some fun this year. You'll see me, there's the elf on the shelf back around mm -hmm. Christmas. Um, I'm pretty proud of myself for getting in that trophy case <laughs> and out of it. Uh, it that, they loved that. I, I, three times through the day, I would appear in different places, and that's when we were still AB. So I got to do that twice in, in that week. Um, Easter Bunny did come see us. We also had the Grinch handing out lunches you know, for our, our lunch program when they would come in. And you can just see that the kids, they're wearing those masks. They're okay being in those pods. They accepted what it is, and they were just happy to be back at school and enjoying the learning and socialization that they get to do every single day. So what are we going to do next year? We're going to basically continue on the path and push for even greater things. Um, continue our school-wide Be Blue and Burnt Strong initiatives. We're going to focus on literacy, continuing with that. Continue to work to improve fluency with daily focus and that family engagement. Our hope for this year, we had planned to do that this year, this past year, is host that family literacy night. It did not happen. We're going to continue to develop and implement the literacy stations within our rooms. And I have to brag on my teachers. COVID did not stop them. Pods did not stop them. Um, you can walk in there and you'll see our teachers and our assistants moving about the room, making those centers happen. They, they figured it out. RISE intervention program, um, I approached Ms. Gedling about rise two years ago um, and the district was courteous enough to let Custer pilot that program and we saw such great gains that it became implemented within the entire district and now we are going to make it a bigger focus across the elementary schools with an ESS type program so we're super excited about that we're going to continue with peer observations and classroom visits I loved the peer observations that we got to do when we got to do them. I took that from Adam Cox at BCHS, and it was so beneficial for teachers to get in other classrooms and, and grade levels and things, and, and they appreciated that. Um, we're going to continue our school-wide focus on math, the program, the rigor, the centers, interventions. We're having a PD this summer at Custer that is focused specifically on <laughs> math and math practices. And, and we're going to dive in. We, we realize and we see the gaps and the interventions and the extra help the kiddos are needing. And so that's going to be a strong focus for us next year. Again, host a family math night. Continue to use the math facts fluency and implement simple solutions. That was a goal. I'm not giving up on simple solutions for flashbacks every day. They're just not being real cooperative with me right now. Um, but I'm, I'm going to be resilient and persevere with that. We're going to continue with our STEAM Fridays for K-5. We're also incorporating the new technology standards within that component and the use of um, PBL, project-based learning, and passion projects in the classrooms. My teachers are actually doing some of that right now with, with our kiddos at this time of the year. Continue with co-teaching in the classrooms. We've really driven that home this year. I think Mr. Brockman can attest to that. And, and working to not only use our special ed teachers in a co-teaching, platform, but also my related arts teachers. I've got a PE teacher who has a strong math background who is going into math classes and, and co-teaching math. So we're, we're trying to use everybody. Um, continue our strong social emotional focus at CES. That is not going to go away. And that's it. Right. Any questions? I love your enthusiasm and the fact that you dress to match your school color. <laughs> <laughs> I do that every now and then. <laughs> I love it. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank, you, right. Thank you all for the time. Right. And come see us. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you very much, Mr. All right. How about Mr. Brandon Hayes? Hey, Rick. Next time, so give him the clicker, give him the remote for your truck. So <laughs> Good afternoon. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you. So one thing that you all are going to see here is whenever I talk about the great things that's happening at Irvington, you're going to see a lot of things that are repeated. And I think that goes back to this district and how we are all so cohesive together and 
again, I know Renee talked about us four elementary principals working together, and we have all year long, and we continue to do that. And what my school may need may be a little different than Custer, but we still know what is important, and then we adapt that to meet our school's needs. So a lot of the activities you're going to see, yes, we have all done that, but because we felt that was what's best for kids this year. And so I just want to give a shout out to our whole district leadership team for allowing us to cooperate so much together on that and, and drive our kids forward in Breckenridge County. But I'm going to talk about Irvington because that's the special place in my heart right now. So I'm going to tell you about some of the great things. And I'll be thinking about going somewhere else. I'm going on that right now. No, no, no. no. I, I love Irvington. I'm there. I'm there. I am there. So one of the things that I, I had to put on here was one of the bulletin boards in our one of the classrooms says you can't mask our success. And certainly we went with that this year. And we have done everything possible to make this year a great year. You know, no more COVID excuses. We're gonna embrace this and we're gonna do what's best for our kids. And so you will see here that this year we decided to, you know, go with a superhero theme. It kind of goes with that SOAR theme that we started last year that goes with our safe, on task, accountable, respectful, the different pillars that we use as a behavior system. And so this year we're soaring like a superhero. And let me tell you, our kids absolutely loved it. And so all of our teachers did a fantastic job decorating their doors, bulletin boards. And so we had various themes throughout the year that kind of went back to that. And so we've just been soaring like superheroes at Irvington this year. So again, one thing that we really tried to do was to have all of our extracurriculars, all the things that we wanted kids to be involved in because we know they need to be involved in those different activities. So a couple of our successes. So we placed um, overall second in the District Governor's Cup. So we are excited about that with our quick recall team placing third overall. But then our FPS team moved on to region and then we ended up placing second in region. So again, super excited to them. Uh, for them and the coaches and all the hard work that they put in because again practices were a little different but we made it work and then one of our fourth grade students Miss Elena Scheffler she placed third in the Jim Claypool art or Claypool art contest and then certainly basketball like Miss Wright told you all that was definitely a challenge but I'm so glad that we were able to pull that off and so both our boys and girls ended up placing fourth overall in the tournament and Again, we had a hard time making a team. You'll see our girls team there. We That was the only night we had five players the whole season, but we made it work. And so they had a great time and I'm very, very excited that we were given that opportunity. So next, the favorite part, I'm all about rewards with food. I don't know, you all see that. And so these have been some of my favorite rewards we've ever done. We'll have to continue these for sure. So this year so accelerated reader we talked about that a little bit last year whenever i presented to you all how we had more points earned last year than ever before and so we wanted to continue that especially with our kids being at home we still wanted a book in their hands and so we've done several things this year to kind of promote those accelerated reader points and so we've already had a pizza party once and we are going to have another celebration next week and so we are glad that kids are still reading because that's super important Another thing that we noticed right off was that math was starting to be really affected from this A-B schedule and you know we're doing the best we can but we saw that math was really taking a hit. So we started using the program Extra Math and we have more students right now that have mastered their math facts than ever before. So they are all excited about earning these certificates and if they master their math facts and then we're going to have an ice cream party next week, so they're going to get to come and, and hang out with me as we eat lots of ice cream. So we're looking forward to that next week. I need to make sure I know what day that is. <laughs> yes, I was just trying to say that. Check that out. I'm going to have the works there. You need to have broccoli. Treat. Broccoli? <laughs> you won't shut up. <laughs> We also included, so with our kids being home, we also wanted our families to be involved. And one thing that I have always bragged about is the Irvington community backing our school. You all know that if we have an event, you better have a big parking lot, lots of grass space, because we're all coming to that event. And so since we couldn't have some of those activities, um, we wanted to do things to get our parents involved and families involved. And so we've had things like the book character challenge and we've also had to decorate a cake to go with our theme. And what we would do is if they would complete that with their family, they in turn got like a $5 voucher at the book fair. 
So then that allowed kids, you know, that may not bring a lot of money with them to have five dollars to go spend and buy a book at the book fair. So we're very grateful for all our Title One funds and the, the activities that we've been able to do this year with that. So next year, some things that we're going to continue, and again, what you heard Ms. Wright talk about is going to be common here. So the first thing is that RISE Intervention Program. A shout out to Ms. Wright for bringing that to, you know, piloting that and then really treat, teaching the rest of the schools about that. That program works. And we were able to get two rounds in this year, and on average, our kids were growing three levels on this type of schedule. So that is huge. and we're very excited to continue that next year in an even greater capacity. We do want to go back to this reading fluency. We were not able to do that this year, so we want to bring that back and have a family information night so our parents know what that is and really understand the importance of them being able to be fluent readers. Next year, we have purchased a new program for math. It's called Go Math. The middle school has used this for several years and they've seen some great results with that. So we'll be bringing that to our K through five classrooms next year. And then we're also gonna have a focus on writing as well. We want to ex expand our SOAR expectations. So that's not going away. And we'll kind of tweak our theme a little bit so it <laughs> continues to revolve around that. And then this year, we actually did have morning meetings built into our schedule and those have gone extremely well, but we are excited to bring Peace Corners to Irvington some of the teachers did set them up, but of course they weren't able to use them. So we're excited to embrace that next year and kind of see what that's going to do um, for us and all of our kids at, at IES. And that is all I've got. So is there a super shirt underneath your you got real? I forgot that. <laughs> Maybe next time. There's okay. a phone booth outside. <laughs> if you can find a phone booth. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Thank Hayes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for those updates. Thank you. We'll move on to uh, B operations and under number one is to hear the update on the high school project. Where's the best place to stand? Wherever you are. Yeah, wherever you are. Right here. In the corner. In the corner. In the corner. Well, on the plastic. I didn't spend a lot of time in the corner as a kid. So, no, just want to go real quick. Obviously, we're going to be at the tour later on this mm -hmm. evening. So, excited about that. And I think you're going to. Be very pleased with what you've seen in the progress. So, um, we just a uh, couple big highlights we were talking before the meeting. Uh, some things you're gonna start seeing. We're gonna have a big delivery of roof materials that's coming in the next couple of weeks, I think, John. So, uh, we've seen a lot of that start coming. The roof coming together on the, both the athletics and then for the building itself. Um, tile in the restrooms is gonna be starting here in the next couple of weeks. So, in the main, those are the the, the very large gang restrooms in the core of the building on both floors. So. Those all get tiled, and so that's going to be starting up. Uh, you also see, and remember, uh, the the pipe, the storm pipe extension that we approved last month. So a lot of that work starting to get underway, going out towards the baseball hitting facility, or the I guess the softball and baseball hitting facility on the back side of the site. So that's going to start coming. Um, what else? We've got a lot of the masonry wrapping up, and uh, so you'll see that when we're out there. I think you're going to really enjoy those things. So. Uh, we did meet with the bank earlier this week, Michael and myself, uh, for the for the bank that's going to be in portion in the in the cafeteria commons mm -hmm. area. So we'll be getting some things together for, with them and coordinate those folks to kind of let them do some branding mm -hmm. that also ties into the school theme as well. So we can kind of have a, a good partnership that's already set up and established that will kind of you know bring itself to a, to a good prominent spot there in the in the commons area. So um, want to be kind of just short and sweet this this time since we're going to go see it in person. So. You got any questions? Uh, go ahead. I, I do. I noticed we they did some painting on the roof. Yes. We're getting rid of the boxes up there on top of the roof, aren't we? So not all of them, but but the the dormers that you see. Okay. So those those boxes that you see on the auditorium are smoke evac systems. So those oh. have to stay in place. So okay. so that's why those are still there. But what the dormers the that dormers you see going away. up on the main classroom building, those will be coming off. Okay. So yeah, yeah. So so they've started painting. You'll see they've started some of the painting on the back side of the. Uh, the canopy on the bus loop there and, and a lot of the medallion and things you see right. in the elevations yeah, they've good. done a really sharp job and a, a lot of attention to detail to even not even over paint the mortar joints so really really yeah. being precise with their painting and i think it turned it looks out good. really nice yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's gonna be a big transformation for that, for that. <clears throat> so it's really going to start to look like brick maroon well done well done 
Well, well done. Anyway, so we'll, we'll be at the tour, and I think we've got a change order coming up real quick here. Um, basically, we had some, a found condition with the way some of the handicapped seating was in the auditorium. Uh, we worked with John's team, was able to kind of reduce that to minimal cost as far as what that alteration was going to be. You've got much improved handicapped seating of what we even originally planned. So a lot more space and availability and, and right straightforward access, I think, is going to work really well. So this cost is just some additional rope lighting that we need to kind of light the pathways when it's, when it's dark. So that's what's on there tonight. So you can approve that. And then off with that, we'll see you out at the site. So, all right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Item two would be approve the change order for the BCHS renovation project you, that you just heard about. Joy makes a motion. Second. Rick seconds. Any other discussion on that? All those in favor? Approve that one. Thank you. Item three is approved entering into contract for the Breckenridge County Fiscal Court for the parochial transportation of the 21-22 school year. This is Sorry. something we do every year. I recommend approve. Vanessa makes the motion and Mark second. seconds. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Carry that one. Item four is approved the 21-22 tentative budget. So this is the second round of budgeting that I'm going to ask you guys to approve. <clears throat> the next round will be uh, in September when we finalize everything. Um, it's been a tough budget for this year simply because it's a good problem to have. We've got a lot of extra money that's coming in and we're trying to figure out how to incorporate that into our budget. Uh, right now, roughly, we're looking at about a $35 million budget. And that's all the funds, so that's grants, food service, debt service, and the general fund. Uh, Around 23.1 uh, million uh, for the general fund, which is is pretty typical uh, right now. Um, we're hoping as we go through the uh, SR2 uh, spending plan, which shout out to KDE by the way, because the tentative budget, the SR2, and the school report card are all due at the exact same time this month. So <laughs> I appreciate that from them. <laughs> That's. <laughs> That's on YouTube, though, so that's live. We can <laughs> live. Um, <laughs> moving on, but you we can do it. <laughs> thank you. Uh, we're hoping to get around 1.4 million in savings uh, from the ESSER 2 fund. That's an approximation right now. I'm still going through the spending plan, uh, and that would be money considered to be relief to the general fund. And then obviously, we're taking on some new initiatives that we've talked about in previous meetings uh, with ESSER. The staffing that we that uh, Miss Knuckle went through it includes those six ESSER positions for intervention uh, to address loss of learning, which is really our key focus in the instructional area for next year. Uh, <clears throat> revenue is going to increase slightly at around 3.3 percent. Uh, main driver of that is uh, full day kindergarten, which is increased seek. Uh, we're hoping that we continue to lobby as a state. To, to that maintain that's, that keeps in the budget. Uh, cross your fingers for that because it does make a huge difference mm -hmm. in terms of the funding for SEEK. Uh, taxes wise with property assessments um, we're looking right now it, it, currently my projection shows the rate staying the same. We can take the rate at the same rate that was last year or the compensating rate and we're still going to determine that this summer to make a recommendation to you all. Um, <clears throat> Obviously, technology, we're continuing with our Chromebook initiative. Uh, we're very, very close to that one-to-one, -one, and now we're trying to look to put a plan in place to replace those units as we go forward. And then on the back, because I like pretty pictures, I put some uh, trend data on there, and just you know, average growth for property since 2011 has been about 3%. You can see C took a pretty significant dip in the last couple of years, mainly because of enrollment and funded uh, average daily attendance issues. That's going to continue to go back up, I think. Our tenants has gotten better, our enrollment's gotten better in full day kindergarten. And so you can see some of the funded enrollment. Transportation uh, is pretty much flat at this point. The budget, uh, the legislators haven't really increased that funding. And, you know, so what we're trying to do is, is contain the costs, which we've been doing with the route, of, the route reductions we've been doing over the last few years. Uh, that's all I got. I went through that pretty quickly. Certainly, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to entertain those. If not, I would recommend approval of the budget. Mark makes a motion. Second. Rick seconds. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Carrying that one on. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. We'll move on to approve the district school resource officer contract for the Breckenridge County Sheriff's Department for the 21-22 school year. This is the same terms that we've had uh, each time. Also, uh, had a great meeting with Sheriff Billy Richardson uh, about a 
a few weeks ago uh, about SR about our current SRO and how first of all how great we feel about Officer Chambers mm -hmm. and how blessed we feel to have him and and uh, and just our partnership with the Sheriff's Office. So it was uh, a great meeting and uh, I recommend approval. Mm -hmm. Vanessa makes a motion. Mark seconds. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Item six would be approved the Breckenridge County Schools 21-22 Certified Evaluation Plan. Uh, we met with our 50-50 uh, committee, and they are in, they are in uh, agreement with our <coughs> current with the plan that we're putting for you tonight. I recommend approval. Mark makes a motion. Yeah. Rick seconds. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Item seven approve the 21-22 District Code of Acceptable Behavior and Discipline Handbook. There are no changes from uh, this year, and it stays the same. I recommend approval. Move to approve. Rick makes a motion. Second. Mark seconds. Any other discussion there? All those in favor? Item eight would be approved to revise 21-22 extra service salary schedule. Yeah, this is uh, due to the uh, increased interest in starting a bass fishing team at the high school. Uh, the, through our Title IX process, Title IX surveys, there was significant interest, and uh, Mr. Butler helped uh, facilitate interest meetings, and the, the interest is there, and so this is to help us continue to move forward to uh, start the bass fishing team. It just adds a coaching stipend so that we can find someone to supervise and coach the bass fishing team. So, uh, Joy makes the motion. Second. Rick seconds. Any other discussion there? All those in favor? Move along with that one. Item 9 would be approve uh, Patrick and Associates LLC for the auditing services for the 2021 school year in the amount of $20,500. Our primary auditor for Heartland's CPAs, <coughs> Brian Woosley, had some significant health issues, so he was forced to drop Breckenridge County. Uh, I had to go through <laughs> a rather emergency look to try to find uh, an audit. An auditor, uh, KD, has allowed us to, to not do an RFP process, but instead allowed me to go out and solicit uh, proposals. I did find one, Patrick and Associates. They've had, I think, we're the fourth school district that they've taken on. Heard a lot of great things about them. They're very thorough. Um, and looking forward to having them come in. So I recommend approval. Where are they located? Yeah. They're located in Winchester, which is, uh, which is primarily the reason you saw the increase in the audit, which I expected that given the late in the season and the scheduling issues, but it mainly it was because of travel that I have to incur to get here. I make a motion. Second. Mark makes a motion. Vanessa seconds. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Item 10, approve the out of area attendance requests. Joy makes a motion. Second. Vanessa seconds. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Item 11 is approved the resolution of supplemental school year program, SB 128, accept all student <coughs> applications. Okay, we had uh, three applications for the supplemental school year program, and uh, I recommend approval. Move to approve. Rick makes the motion. Yes. Uh, Vanessa seconds. Any other discussion there? All those in favor? Item 12 is discuss the superintendent evaluation. Uh, we have done in the past 2018 we did one and two 2019 we did three and four and 2020 we did standard five recommend we go ahead and do standard six this year if it's okay with you all and standard six is collaborative leadership so we'll ask what dr carter six? I'm sorry. Uh, collaborative leadership thank you and we'll ask dr carter has given us uh, examples we get them every month and so I'll email you guys what the standard is and the rubric for that. And uh, if you don't care, get that back to me. Do we want to discuss that at the June meeting? So yes, let's, 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 let's not worry over it. Not his vacation. Okay. Not <laughs> so we'll go ahead. Yeah, we'll and see I'll, if he's going to get thumbs up or not in June. <laughs> I'll go ahead and get that, that form out to you guys to fill out and then uh, I'll put those together and then we'll, we'll discuss it at the June meeting. Yeah. Yeah. There'll be more plastic on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, item 13 would be a special call meeting date for June to close out the 2021 fiscal year. I move that we meet on June the 29th at 5.30 p.m. here at the Annex. Second. Joy makes a motion. Mark seconds. I'm not sure if we needed a motion or not. 
and we're all in favor. If no one yeah. else, we won't say. Yeah. What day is it? Yeah. What day is that? Tuesday. 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 All right. Item 14 is approving out of uh, state field trip. Yay. For the high school <laughs> girls basketball. <laughs> to go freeze uh, high school in go go freeze Florida. In December 26th, we're going to freeze this year, but you know, it's cold. Low. Yeah. Oh. It's on, yep. it's on Pensacola. Well, you know, I'm going to move to approve. So. We haven't gotten to approve enough state field trip. <laughs> all so long. I think anybody's going anywhere here. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to. Joy makes the motion. I second. And Vanessa seconds. Any other discussion? All those in favor? All right, nothing from BCEA, BCESP, uh, superintendent's report. All right, I'll be quick. The last day of school for students for the 2021 school year will be on Monday, May 24th. Closing day for all staff is Tuesday, May 25th. Eighth grade promotion at BCMS will take place on Monday, May the 24th. We're having it in two sessions. The first one's at 5.30, and that's the Eagles eighth grade team. And the second one is the Patriots eighth grade team, which is at 7.30. The class of 2021 graduation in-person ceremony uh, will take place on Friday, May the 28th, and uh, we're doing that in two sessions as well. As well. Graduates with last names starting with A through J will have their in-person ceremony at 5:30. Graduates with last names starting K through Z will have their in-person ceremony at 7:30 p.m. Both the high school and the middle school just released updated um, updated guidelines uh, allowing up to 10 family members now. Uh, for each child and, and that's in response to some of the restrictions starting to lift a little bit and that was in consultation with our our school our district health team um, very much very much and then the class of 2021 members that are earning a high school diploma at the Breckridge County Independent School will have their in-person ceremony at BCMS this year on Thursday June the 3rd at 6 o'clock p.m. so we're very excited about the upcoming end of the year celebrations it's really really great that we're going to be able to do this in person uh you know coming from a year ago where everything was virtual and i'm excited about the work that was done to make those things as uh, those events as great and memorable as possible but it is exciting to get back to having an in-person ceremony like that it is. and that concludes superintendent's report we won't adjourn until after yep, no we we uh, can adjourn the the tour is just a notice okay. Thank you. Move to adjourn. Rick makes a motion and Mark seconds, and we're all in favor. Okay. We go speak to Where do we need to